10 o'clock, and it's so good to see everyone here this morning. Heartiest welcome and happy new year. I hope you and your family brought it in royally, uh, and it's hard to believe we're already 12 days into it, isn't it? Uh, I see elected officials, uh, city councilman uh, Jimmy Henson, and help me out, guys. Is anybody else missing? Uh, Tommy, if you bring the list forward, and this would be a good time to uh, turn off your phones. Still have them on. And I will, thank you. I will call the Pauline County Board of Commissioners workshop to order on this 12th day of January, 2021. Uh, before I invite uh, Pastor Beloy to, to do the invocation, I wanted to um, say a few things about him and the church that he started here uh, in our community, in our county. Um, he's also just a dear friend and he, uh, he is a mentor to me. Uh, I've been around a lot of good leaders, being out of the military, uh, but I've drawn a lot of uh, things from him and uh, his style of leadership, and I, I'll always appreciate that greatly. Um, he came here in 1997 with three of his closest friends, and they planted Westridge, first met out at Vaughn Elementary School and just across the line in Cobb County and then uh, later at Pauling uh, High School gym in the gymnasium until enough money was raised to, to build the current location there on, on 92. Not only did he plant Westridge Church, but he has been a part of planning uh, and assisting in 185 uh, other church plants as far as Boston uh, and uh, Detroit and, and assisted in uh, areas of church planting all over the United States. But not only the United States, um, Westridge has a, a presence and a ministry in uh, <coughs> uh, Burkina Faso, Africa, and in Scotland, uh, in uh, Cuba, Nicaragua, and it's just a, a church with the value of outreach. So uh, <coughs> I just wanted to recognize all that, that you, Brian, have meant to the community and given back to the community and the outreach that you've had uh, uh, to a lot of people that uh, were deprived and hurting folks and were able to lift, lift them up. You've always been open-handed to, to receive and open-handed to give back. So thank you so much for being here. We're starting off our year uh, with Pastor Brian. Giving the invocation means a lot to me personally. So thank you. Stand if you're able. Right. Very honored to be here today, this uh, first meeting of the new year. So let's pray together and then we'll say the pledge. Father, we are so grateful that uh, we live in a country, Father, that we can stand and pray together in a government office. And we're just grateful for uh, these men and women who have been elected to lead us. And I pray today, Lord, for wisdom. Uh, I'm reminded, Lord, in the book of James, in the midst of trial, in the midst of, of suffering and, and a lot of different things that first century Christians were going through, Lord, in, in James chapter 1, verse 5, you remind us that if we will ask for wisdom, Lord, you will give it to us generously without holding back, without reproach. And so we're grateful today for that promise, and we claim it. I claim it for these uh, leaders here today. Lord, we need wisdom right now more than ever before. And not only that, Lord, we need courage, and we need boldness, and we need unity. And so, Lord, I pray that uh, with all of the things that we are all going through together, especially in this past year with this virus and uh, just all of the tension that our country is currently experiencing in so many different arenas, Lord, I pray for the Paulding County Board of Commissioners today that there will be just a great bond of unity and, and a sense of togetherness. May they be of one mind and one spirit today, and I pray that you'll help our, our entire county, Lord, to... Uh, continue to work together uh, and to continue to, to rub shoulders with people that we're different from, Lord, that we may think differently, Lord, but may we just find a common cause, Lord, in wanting to, to see the best for Paulding County, Georgia. And so we're so grateful for these leaders. May you give them your strength, your courage, and most of all, may you give them your wisdom today. And we thank you. Proverbs 3 says, blessed is the one who seeks after wisdom. So we are praying for that today, and thank you for it in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's say the pledge together. I pledge allegiance to the flag 
of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thanks so much, Pastor Brian. Under minutes, the December 8th, 2020 work session and board meeting minutes are available for review. Under announcements, uh, you may notice that instead of positively polling, our uh, public information team has adopted uh, for the positive uh, announcements, team polling. So uh, in the team polling segment this morning for the first time, we'll recognize the employee of the month, Sergeant Ronald Curtis. Let's watch together. Well, I nominated Sergeant Curtis because I've known him uh, for going on 15 years. He has started our FTO program, which is our field training uh, program. Uh, we have uh, trained multiple uh, deputies to become a, a school resource officer as well as DARE officers. He's well dedicated when it comes to his, his job. He is also uh, very uh, approachable. Um, when it comes to all of our 23 officers in our schools, he's just done one amazing job, not only as our boss, but as a mentor as well. The uh, introduction, uh, the next announcement is the introduction of our new post one commissioner, uh, Commissioner Keith Dunn. And because our director of human resources gets involved in all new employees and getting them in the system for pay and training and otherwise, I have uh, asked Ms. Palmer, Ms. Tara Palmer, to tell us a little bit about uh, what she's learned about Keith and maybe his family. Good morning, Happy New Year. Uh, it's my honor and privilege to introduce Mr. Dunn. Uh, Keith was born and raised in Powder Springs, and he went to McEachern High School and he graduated in 1988. He married his wife, Cherie, of 27 years in 1993. Um, Keith and Cherie built their first home in Dallas where they've raised their two children, Taylor and Grace. Keith and his family are very active in church. They're members of the First Baptist Church of Dallas where Mr. Dunn is an ordained deacon. He is very active in other church communities. Keith has worked closely with his father as the president of their family commercial construction business for the last 32 years. In his free time, Mr. Dunn enjoys playing golf with his friends, restoring old cars, and do, doing woodworking in his workshop. He is excited to begin this new journey as Post Commissioner 1 and serving Paulding County. Since my first year as chairman in 2017, uh, the Board of Commissioners adopted a mission, vision, and values. And today, uh, as in the past, uh, I've recruited three Paulding County citizens to re-challenge the Board of Commissioners, uh, citizen talking to the board, by reading our commitments back to <laughs> us or, and back to you. So uh, I'm grateful to Larry Jernigan of uh, Pirates Printing for uh, being with us today and reading the Board of Commissioners' mission statement. Thank you for being here, Larry. Thank you. With the unity and purpose, uh, work to enhance citizens' quality of life by maximizing resources to make Paulding County a better, better place to live, work, and play. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And... Ms. Jessica Kilgore has volunteered to read the Board of Commissioners' uh, vision statement. Thank you, Jessica. You're welcome. Good morning. The vision states, the Paulding County Board of Commissioners will operate as an effective and efficient, and efficient governing body on behalf of all of the citizens of Paulding County to make Paulding County the preeminent place in the, metro, in the Atlanta metropolitan area to live, work, and play. Thank you. Thank you. 
And Ms. Carol McLeod has volunteered to read the Board of Commissioners' value statement. It's good to see everyone. Happy New Year. And as like the pastor said, as long as you use wisdom and discernment in your decisions, you will be fine. Welcome, Keith. It's good to see you up there. Your values statement is, Pauling County, Georgia, is a community that is unique in the Atlanta metropolitan area in its opportunities, diverse citizenry, and recreational programs, but most of all, in its heart. The Pauling County Board of Commissioners will honor these values, honesty, equality, and openness in government, excellence in working with all levels of government and supporting citizen involvement, accountability in order to ensure financial and personal integrity, respect within the county government and to our citizens, teamwork and transparency in order to promote quality decision making. Thank you all, all three of you for reminding us of, of what our mission, vision, and values are, and may we reflect on them every day. Um, another thing that, that I like to do uh, on this first meeting of the year is to uh, recognize our department heads to uh, celebrate their accomplishments. And so um, we're going to, as a full board and two staff members, our county administrator and our county attorney, we're going to introduce uh, since in respect for COVID, uh, we didn't bring everybody in like we have in previous years, but we will uh, have them on the screen and uh, we'll talk about in alphabetical order uh, what, who they are and uh, what their, one of their greatest achievements for the year has been. So uh, I'll start it off and then we'll go to my left, Miss Lori Ashmore. You can see her in person right here. Uh, the most significant 2020 accomplishment for the water system was the completion of the East Hiram Sewer Improvements Project. The $8.5 million project was completed under budget and included 5.3 miles of piping and, regional, and a regional pumping station, providing essential sewer infrastructure to support development of over 620 acres of commercial properties, including the Greystone headquarters and the Industrial Building Authority property on the Bill Carruth Parkway. Next, we have uh, Tim Atchison. He's the Director of Fleet Maintenance. Uh, Fleet Maintenance is one of the smaller county departments and consists of 12 employees, including Tim. At one time, they had five employees out with COVID-19 slash related employee personal leave and was able to keep the shop open and keep up with service and repairs uh, demands of the county. Justice in a pandemic environment most certainly is very difficult. When COVID-19 began in early 2020, court practices changed almost overnight. In an effort to balance safety and justice, and with everyone working together, all courts within the Paulding Judicial Circuit successfully transitioned from packed courtrooms and lobbies to conducting over 90% of judicial proceedings virtually. This has allowed open access to the courts for our citizens and moving cases along. I'm pleased to announce, um, introduce uh, Bruce Coyle, our county engineer. Uh, Bruce and his team have not s skipped a beat uh, during the uh, COVID-19 by doing plan reviews online using Bluebeam uh, software technology. Uh, building permit inspectors are using iPads in the field to document inspections and use technology upgrades to keep up the pace of residential and commercial development. I'd like to introduce Angela Ferris, the senior administrative assistant to the chairman. In conjunction with the chairman's office, Angela has worked strategically with other departments, assisting in the facilitation of various projects and required meetings with both virtual and in person. She's researched and resolved various concerns at the initial stage from citizens on behalf of the chairman. I would like to introduce Scott Green, Director of Operations, Team Achievement, Completion of County's Largest Building Project Ever, the new jail and sheriff's office with effective coordination to control cost and ensure quality, 
administration led a commission supported effort to prevent jail from becoming a four-story Dallas landmark by expanding site to allow for a single floor layout. Trevor Hess, who is the Chief Marshal of Paulding County, greatest accomplishment or one of the greatest accomplishments of 2020 is getting um, thousands of people in and out of this building uh, as they visit the Tax Commissioner's Office and the Tax Assessor's Office, going through those long lines but efficiently moving lines and keeping us safe, uh, a challenge that we've not really had to deal with before, but your department, your office has done a great job of that. And I'd like to uh, talk about Deidre Holden, who uh, we definitely uh, recommit our support to uh, Deidre and her staff. The Pauley County election staff and poll workers successfully conducted four elections, a, a hand recount audit, and a countywide presidential recount during a global pandemic. pandemic. The elections department processed absentee ballots uh, of 100,000, or they have processed absentee ballots and 100,930 voters in person, along with 51,975 voters on election day. The Pauley County election staff is the perfect picture of teamwork and dedication to the citizens and voters of Pauley County. Way to go. I'd like to introduce George Jones, Director of uh, Paulding County Department of Transportation. Uh, on December 21st, we were able to open up uh, for traffic the first roundabout in Paulding County that was designed and constructed by the county and the intersection of Ridge Road and Bob Hunton Road and Corn Store Road, providing a much improved safety and mobility. Next is Michael Justice, Parks and Recreation Director. With two synthetic turf fields were constructed at the Brawley Sports Complex. The fields are multi-use and have been in place since the spring season of 2020. These fields, while serving the public's desire for playing surfaces, save the county money when it comes to maintenance, irrigation, and fertilization, and games lost to inclement weather. SPLOS funds paid for these recreational improvements. Uh, next, we have Ann Littman, Community Development Director. Uh, their major accomplishments were advances in online permit issuance. The occupational tax permit slash business license saw an increase in usage of online the online portal, and they began accepting building permits through the portal as well as submitting them electronically through email. Uh, next, we have Will Lyons, the IT Director. We'll handle the deployment of new desktops, laptops, and tablets to the Paulding County Public Safety Agency offices and vehicles to support the new integrated software platform. The integration of mapping features and services provided advanced mapping and routing services to dispatch and responding emergency services, which improves response times and adds additional protection for men and women of emergency services through location-based mapping. Rebecca Meredith, she is our executive assistant and county clerk. Our greatest accomplishments in 2020 was the implementation of the Municode meeting software, allowing staff to streamline the agenda and minutes to process, give citizens an area to view both board meeting documents. The office also worked with the U.S. Census Bureau to ensure that everyone was counted in Paulding County for the 2020 Census Campaign. Thank you, Rebecca. David Mumford, the Director of Paulding County 911. David says that the greatest accomplishment for the 911 Department in 2020 is its work toward the implementation of the public safety software project, specifically the computer-aided dispatch and mobile system. Project will result in enhanced responder safety, better service for Paulding County citizens, and integration between the different public safety agencies in the county. And the Board of Commissioners would like to recommit to Ms. Tara Palmer, a relatively new Human Resources Director of the Paulding County HR Department was awarded the 2020 uh, ACCG Association of County Commissioners of Georgia Safety Grant, as well as the ACCG Wellness Grant. 
The safety grant allowed us to purchase new bulletproof vests for our officers at the marshal's office. The wellness grant will allow us to continue well, wellness training and programs for our employees. Thank you, Tara. Someone I'm partial to, Joey Pelfrey, the fire chief of Paulding County Fire and Rescue. The Paulding County Fire Department opened a new fire station in December 2020, Station 12. It is located west of Dallas at 310 Wayside Lane near the intersection of Spring Road. It is staffed 24 hours with trained professional fire and emergency medical personnel. Next we have the, my favorite one, the one that controls the money. <laughs> and it's Tabitha Pollard, finance director. The finance department has experienced a challenging year, but they have managed to keep employees and vendors paid, adopt a budget with complete property tax rollback. That's no property tax increase. They successfully completed the 2020 audit and kept offices supplied with PPE. Our finance director completed the National Association of Counties Professional Development Academy on high performance leadership featuring instructions by General Colin Powell along with other nationally known successful leaders. Thank you. It's an honor to uh, introduce Jimmy Renfro, our maintenance director. Uh, they say that uh, James Brown, the late James Brown, was the hardest working man in show business. And I will tell you that Jimmy Renfro is the hardest working man in the maintenance business. <laughs> And uh, I, I want to just say uh, about him that uh, he has decreased the need for outside vendors by utilizing skills from the department employees. And Jimmy does a really good job of doing that and has saved the taxpayers an enormous amount of money in that process. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, I'd like to introduce James Stokes, the chief tax appraiser. Uh, in addition to meeting all the statutory requirements required for Paulding County's digest submission, the Board of Tax Assessors has collaborated with the Clerk of the Court, Sheila Butler, to provide multiple virtual property appeal options for property owners to ensure staff and owner's health. So, we say to the staff as a board, we support you, we hope you'll recommit to your missions, and we look forward to working with teamwork uh, every day, every day of the year. Uh, the Board of Commissioners would like to present Ms. Uh, Lavera Newton with a proclamation uh, in celebration of her 105th birthday, and we may have her on the phone now. Ms. Newton, are you there? Yes, we're here. Hi, Ms. Newton, I have you uh, on speaker here with the chairman and the board. Ms. Newton, it's uh, it's a great joy to be able to present to you a proclamation recognizing 105 years and the proclamation reads as follows whereas Lavera Newton a now resident of Paulding County was born December 12th 1915 uh, in Sabine Parish Louisiana the daughter of Jeffrey Daniel Speed and Aura Lee Morris Speed of Fisher Louisiana she was the second oldest uh, of seven siblings and whereas married she married the love of her life, Howard Newton, April the 22nd, 1934. The couple was blessed with four children. And whereas Miss Newton graduated from the uh, Madam C.J. Walker School of Cosmetology in Kansas City, Missouri, owned and operated her home beauty salon. She was employed by the Kansas City, Missouri School District uh, as dietitian service uh, in the dietitian service department and worked in several schools. She also trained the position of nurse's aide at St. Luke's Hospital in Kansas City, where she retired as a senior nurse aide in 1980. And whereas she and her husband were members of the Paseo Baptist Church in Kansas City, she served as a deaconess, Sunday school teacher, usher board member, and member of the Women's Mission Union, the Sunbeam Leader Local and, and State of Missouri Youth Department, as well as numerous community organizations. And whereas having lived in Pauling County since 2011, Ms. Newton has been homebound and very grateful for home care nurse, Ms. Glenda Poindexter uh, Whitlow. Ms. Newton enjoys attending church, reading and keeping up with the current events. And whereas Ms. Newton turned 105 just uh, a month ago on December 12th, and she looks forward to being an inspiration to everyone. Her words to live by that she says frequently is, quote, 
take due notice and govern yourself accordingly. Therefore, I, David L. Carmichael, Chairman of the Pauling County Board of Commissioners, do hereby proclaim January the 12th today, 2021, as LaVera Newton Day for her faithful service to her family, church, and community in Paulding County. And my assistant, Ms. Angela Ferris, will get you that proclamation uh, as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you for allowing us to honor her. Thank you. Dr. Stephen D. Dillingham, uh, director of the U.S. Census Bureau, recognizes uh, Pauling County, and he sent uh, a recognition uh, certificate here. The U.S. Census Bureau hereby recognizes Pauling County as an invaluable member of the uh, 2020 uh, Census Community Partnership and Engagement Program. Uh, we appreciate the efforts uh, that you made in making the partnership program a success and helping achieve uh, a successful 2020 census uh, signed by Dr. Stephen Dillingham. There were many people that helped the, the chairperson, Rebecca Meredith. I'm not going to read all of them, but all of you that, that did help with the, with the census and uh, you're in hearing of this word, whether, whether in the room or at home, we appreciate uh, your work on that effort and it made it a lot more difficult during the pandemic, didn't it? Do you have anything you'd like to say about it? Okay. All right. I am thrilled and honored to be able to uh, invite our invited guest, uh, Mr. Jerry Sharon, uh, who is the 14th District Congressional District Representative for us uh, at the State Transportation Board. Uh, since Jerry served as chairman, he has uh, never stopped giving back to his <coughs> county, and we appreciate him being here and giving us an update on what's going on in, in Paulding County and, and the general area. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you so much for inviting me, Chairman Carmichael. Before I start, I wanted to take a moment of personal privilege, as I used to call it when I was chairman. I was looking at all the department heads that you showed a few minutes ago and think, also thinking back of just driving around the county. Um, I used to hear all the time from citizens that what made Paulding County great was the citizens, and, and I would be like, no, no. What makes Paulding County great are its employees. Uh, you had more than half of your department heads that you mentioned have been here since before I left office, which was in 2008. It's really a, quite an, an accomplishment that 12 years later, you still have more than half the department heads still here. You know, the transition and, and people leaving jobs is, is it kills continuity and, and it, it just uh, it, it keeps you from moving forward as a county. So I want to commend you guys for what you've done and commend those department heads for all the great things they've done. Um, but I do want to come here today and kind of give you guys an overview of what's happening with, with Georgia DOT projects in Paulding County because this is probably the most exciting time in the history of the county when it comes to Georgia Department of Transportation. Uh, before I before I get into the meat of the um, of, of the talk today, I wanted to uh, kind of give you guys a brief history because I don't know that any of you are aware of um, the long and storied histories of Highway 92 and Highway 61 and, and why it's taken us so long to get where we are. So if you go back to 1981, which was 40 years ago, the state of Georgia hired a, a gentleman to go in and study all the state roads and give the state of Georgia a recommendation on all state roads. And what he recommended at the time as one of the highest priorities in the entire state of Georgia was to four lane Highway 92 through Paulding County. Now just to give you, just to think about that, we are 40 years later and Highway 92 is not four lane through Paulding County yet. Now we're working on that and, and we're working very hard as, as an organization at DOT to make that happen. But it takes that long sometimes to make something happen when it comes to state government. If you fast forward from 81 into the late 80s and into the early 90s, you'll find that Highway 92, even though it was at the top of the list, is still languished with, this, with the state. 
uh, various funding issues, uh, political issues, and, and I, I personally happen to think that Highway 278 kind of jumped over it out of nowhere. Um, but 92 sat there. Then you come into the 1990s, and in the 1990s, uh, Paulding County got lumped in with Metro Atlanta for reasons I still don't understand in something called non-attainment. Now, non-attainment uh, was where the federal government says your air quality is so bad, we're not going to let you have any federal funds to build roads. Now, you can, y'all, many of you have been here since the 90s. Um, I find it hard to believe Paulding County's air quality in 1990 was bad, but we got lumped in with Metro Atlanta and we got stuck into a no man's land where we couldn't get any federal dollars to, to widen that road. Uh, in 01, when I was elected chairman, we found out that even if we were not in non-attainment, we weren't even on the state transportation plan. That was a, a critical error. I have no idea how it happened. Uh, we may have been on there and fallen off. I don't know. But uh, I want to I take a moment at this time to recognize a few people who helped us get on there because it was very, very difficult to get added to the tip. Uh, probably the mover and shaker that wasn't elected that needs rec uh, recognition is Ken Thigpen. Uh, Ken is a businessman in Paulding County and has been involved in every facet of this county over the years. And Ken Thigpen worked very hard and had a personal relationship with Governor Barnes at the time. And Ken was able to get Highway 92 and Highway 61 uh, added to the state transportation plan at the time. We're still in non-attainment, but at least we're now on the list. Um, in the last decade, Paulding County has come out of non-attainment and it's called we've entered conformity for air quality. And federal funds have been released uh, now to start widening the roads in Paulding County and in other counties in Metro Atlanta. And um, that's where we're at today. I'm going to ask Rebecca to please hand these out. And, and we've got some extra ones. Maybe you can hand them out to the, hand them out to the audience after this. So this is kind of an overview of the uh, monies that are about to be spent or ha are being spent in Paulding County right now on uh, state highway projects. And I'm going to start going north to south. This isn't the order they're being constructed in, but it's just the order I went in. On Highway 92 from Old Burn Hickory Road to Pickett's Mill Place, basically it's, that's uh, right up there on the north end of the county crossroads area to, into Cobb County. There are two projects ongoing right now. Uh, one of them, right-of-way acquisition, is very close to being completed. And uh, on the other one, they're working on right-of-way acquisition. We've got two different costs on that, that segment of the road. The first one is a little over $37 million, and the second one is almost $35 million. Uh, total combined estimate on that section of the road is going to be $72 million. I'm not going to read all the stuff in here because you've got it, and we'll make it available to the public. But uh, I'm not going to go into the, you know, exactly what's going to be built and water line movements and stuff like that. Uh, the next section that I've got on the list is from East Paulding Middle School to Old Burn Hickory Road. So most of you know where East Paulding Middle School is. And um, East Paulding Middle School up to Burn Hickory Road, that's near the fire station up there, just to kind of give you guys a perspective. And that's um, right now construction funds are in 2025 and right of way funding is going to happen next year. That's a right at $74 million It's going to be spent on that section of the road. Coming next is from Nebo Road to East Paulding Middle School. Basically, this goes right through the middle of Hiram. Uh, construction funds are available in fiscal year 25. Right-of-way acquisition should begin this, this winter. The projected cost on that is $97 million plus. That, you know, there's a lot of bridges going down through Hiram. You're having to buy commercial properties and things like that. It's going to be very, very expensive. And last but not least is what's going on right now, which is Malone Road, which is just south of the county line in Douglasville, uh, to Nebo Road. That is a six-lane highway. Uh, it is, the construction is happening right now, and the cost on that is about $86 million. I'm going to show you a few slides right now. I think this one right here is the, is the slide. I was actually at that intersection last week looking at that. Um, 
that's finally moving along. These, these construction projects move fairly slow, y'all. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is Macklin Road. I think it was late in 2019, maybe, that uh, Representative Gullett was talking to staff here about uh, what was going on with Macklin Road. Uh, luckily, George Jones and Scott Green made the, the decision to give me a call, and I think it was George that told me that it had been moved from short range to long range, and, and um, quite honestly, at the time, I'd only been down there um, a year or so, and I wasn't familiar with the project because it starts in Cobb. So I didn't even know it had been in short range, but long range pushes it out to about 2035. Um, that is too long. We've been waiting on this road since the 80s also. It's the main artery going into West Cobb County. We're the second largest provider of employees for Lockheed coming out of Paulding County. We needed to get that road moved up. I went and met with staff at GDOT about that road and was basically told that monies had been shifted around and this thing wasn't going to happen for a long time. They would keep it in mind if, if anything got freed up. But uh, at that point, I, I wasn't very optimistic. Um, not too long after that, my counterpart, Jeff Lewis, up in Bartow County was meeting with staff. And uh, basically, some money got freed up from some projects in South Georgia. Jeff gave me a call. He says, look, we've got X amount of dollars. And perhaps you, know, you might want to try to see if anything can happen in Paulding County. Well, uh, I called down there, and staff had already moved that back into short range. Now, the great thing about that was it was a shovel-ready project. So they started construction right away, and they're building that road right now. That's actually very exciting. Um, I think we have some slides. There's one right there of ongoing construction on Macklin Road right now. That road right there, um, that is a $91 million, a little over $90 million road. I want to talk briefly about Highway 61. It paralleled 92. Uh, it was not in the tip. It was in not, we were in nonconformity. And I want to mention Ken again. I want to make sure we, we give him the due. I also want to mention uh, my post commissioners because Back then in 2001, it was a total lobby and effort in Paulding County by the post commissioners um, in 2001 to get Highway 92 added to the tip. We had Larry Ragsdale, Roger Luggett, Hal Eccles, and Wayne Kirby involved. Uh, they picked up the phone every day and called someone to get Highway 92 added. Um, like I said, it wasn't an easy lift, but we got it added. When we started working on 61, which was just a year later, right after we got 92 in the tip, um, we had added Don Powell to the mix, and so we had Larry, Roger, Hal, Kirby, and Don working on, on getting this road added to the tip. We were also very fortunate that Hal Eccles at the time served on the Atlanta Regional Commission's Transportation Air Quality Control Board. Um, that right there probably was as big as anything because the Atlanta Regional Commission is the, is the final decision maker on what roads get added to the tip. The last road I want to talk about is 61. Uh, from the city of Dallas to, to Nebo Road, construction funding is for fiscal year 2025. Right away acquisition is expected to start this winter, and the total cost of that section is about $58 million. So to give you guys an overview of the county uh, and the state investment in Paulding County, uh, we were neglected for the better part of three decades. Um, we are getting, we are getting, uh, we're getting our due as a county. Uh, you're going to be seeing a total investment in Paulding County of just under a half a billion dollars, right at four hundred and seventy-eight million dollars, probably in the next ten years. Now that doesn't include other projects that. The county is working with GDOT on local projects, things like roundabouts and things like that. And let's go to some of those slides right now, too, if we can. Got an intersection improvement, a roundabout at Old Burn Hickory Road. 
uh, bridge replacement on Morningside Drive over Lick Log Creek, the widening of Cedar Crest Road to the county line. Uh, that's, that's a roundabout in Dallas. That, that's a great project because I got actually brought into that and I've been working on that personally. Um, that, that's going to help solve a problem right at Legion Road in Business 6. Next slide, please. And that's it. Uh, before I take questions, I, I, I talked to Commissioner Hart yesterday about this. I've talked to most of you guys about this issue. Um, you're about to see a major change in Paulding County. We've never had mobility. We've never had connectivity. But the biggest change you'll ever see in Paulding County uh, outside of maybe Highway 278 is going to be the 92 corridor. A six-lane road from I-20 to the city limits of Hiram, a four-lane road from there all the way back around to I-75. Um, I cannot stress to you how important it is that you guys protect that corridor for commercial development. When that road gets close to completion, as I mentioned to, to Commissioner Hart yesterday, there will be developers coming to Paulding County from California, Oregon, Chicago, New York. They're going to try to come in and cannibalize every single square inch of that land and make houses. Uh, if we ever are going to get out of our problem with uh, having the, the tax base of commercial be as so, so low as it is in Paulding, and I have, I've heard every one of you say that that's an issue to you, uh, now is the time to lay some kind of a commercial overlay district over all of 92, but especially the six-lane park going into Douglas County, because if you don't, it, you're going to have tens of thousands of houses try to come in right on that road. So with that, I will take any questions you might have. If I don't have the answer, I'll try to get back to you with it. Jerry, what about the um, roundabout on 61 right there around Dabbs Bridge that was uh, proposed a couple years ago? Yeah, I, I would have to defer to George on that or even Scott Green. Um, they, they could tell you what's happening with that a lot better than I could. <laughs> Scott, Scott was saying right away it's been completed. I'll have to look at the recent update of the schedule, but I can text that to you. I believe it's sometime next year. And there's, I believe there are eventually going to be two roundabouts up through there, aren't there? Is that correct? Or is it just, no, it's just going to be the one? Okay, just one. Uh, Jerry, I, you know, you and I have touched on it, and I've talked with Ms. Lippman and, and Ms. Roms and the board, but uh, we very much want to stay ahead of the, uh, and, you know, time's going to fly, as it always does, uh, on this uh, corridor overlay. So, uh, you know, I want to get with you offline and talk some more. And also, we need some legal advice, of course. Um, but one pet peeve I have, this is switching gears, and I just wonder, with you being on the, the board downtown, uh, y'all meet once a month, right? Yeah, well, we, we, we have two meetings a month, but we've because of pandemic, we've n narrowed it down to just one. We basically have what you have, a work session one day and then a voting meeting the next. Mm -hmm. Well, my pet peeve is, is educational. Uh, you take 92 as you breathe from um, <clears throat> uh, East Pauling Middle School Nebo Road in East Pauling Middle School, where all my kids went, uh, you know, it's school traffic, and you get 18 wheelers coming down off of Interstate 75 from Chattanooga mm -hmm. that are, yeah, they'll probably slow down to the speed limit, but I just don't want them on there. So is there, is there a west plan, a, a western solution that'll get all, all the way out to 27 north-south? And, and we can we don't have to spend a lot of time in here well as you may be aware 27 is four lane most of the way now um from i'm going to say from rome yeah from rome all the way down past lagrange i go down there for when i'm going to auburn football games it's a it's a super highway um not and much traffic on it at all no there's not really I, I come home sometimes at night when i get on 27 coming back from the ball game uh i might go 30 minutes without seeing another car uh, there's not a lot of traffic. Uh, I do share your concern with that because, quite honestly, uh, you're going to see traffic is going to come off of 75 onto 92 
especially truck traffic. That, that's one of the reasons why we're, we're doing uh, six lanes south of Hiram, because you're going to see the Hiram Bypass, Bill Cruth Parkway, uh, become a major truck uh, thoroughfare from, from the Norfolk Southern Rail Yard all the way down to I-20. Um, uh, Russell McMurray, our director at, at GDOT, uh, came up with the idea, hey, well, we're four-laning it. Let's just knock it out and make it six lanes. So I think that was probably forward thinking on his part. Um, I don't know the answer to your question. I know that I'm working with the school system right now on several uh, issues when it comes to state roads and, and schools that are on them. Um, but everybody wants a traffic signal. There's nothing worse for moving traffic through, a, through an area than traffic signals. There's nothing. So uh, we're trying to avoid that. Roundabouts are a solution. Um, but I don't have an answer to you on the on the schools and things like that. I'll just have to continue working with the school board on, on their on their issues. Thank you. <clears throat> Other questions? Mr. Sharon, we thank you for your time, uh, your involvement, your reporting back, and we hope to make this a, a regular quarterly or when as needed basis. So, well, thank uh, you for inviting me. I do appreciate it. We will move to bid awards, um, and it's item number two, which says uh, award the DFACS, Department of Family and Children's Services, building roof replacement project to the lowest responsible bidder, Hugh McMartin, in the amount of $68,827.50. And Ms. Pollard's available to talk about it. Good morning. Um, DFAC's building was constructed in about 2005. Um, it has incurred some leaks. Jimmy Renfro, the building maintenance or building facility manager, has gone out there and taken a look, repaired, and it's um, determined that it actually just needs a new roof. In 2005, when we um, constructed that facility, it was constructed for a state office. It was financed and um, built by the county and we rent that facility basically to the state. So we, the financing piece of that was 10 years, so it's paid off. Um, we've just accumulated some funds and we've had to go back periodically and do some maintenance on the building. That's paid for out of those um, rent proceeds. So we have four bids. The bids range from 68, um, sorry, that number's, $68,827.50 up to $143,658.23. Um, Jimmy's reviewed the bids and he has um, approved the Hugh McMartin, which was the low bid, is the one he's chosen to go forward with. So unless you have any questions. Everybody good? Thank you, Tabitha. Reports from committees and departments, none are scheduled. Uh, public participation on agenda items, no one has signed up this morning. Uh, under the consent agenda, uh, first meeting of January, as we voted last month, is when we will uh, appoint, nominate and appoint new people to the board. And this is a, a board activity action, is, as you'll see, uh, a lot of them are direct appointees from the geographical area, the post that post commissioners live in and were elected in. So we're going to do the same way going down the line uh, with the consent agenda items. And I will begin with item number three, which is the Pauline County Airport Authority Board, which has a four year term ending December 31st, 2024. And the Board of Commissioners appointment is David Small. Next on the list, the Alcohol License Review Board with a two-year term ending in December 31st, 2022. His uh, board appointment also, Adam Beavers. Next is the Animal Control Hearing Board. Sorry. The Animal Control Hearing Board with a one-year term ending December 31st, 2021. Ms. Lynn Jackson, Ms. Jessica Gullett, Ms. Jennifer Farrell, Ms. Mandy Brower, and Ms. Suzanne Baker. 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, number six is the Cemetery Preservation Commission. It has a one-year term ending December 31st of this year. Todd Tibbetts would be the chairman appointee. Kathy Bookout would be the post three appointee. And Mike Pickett would be the post four appointee. Uh, next is the Civil Service Board. It has a four-year term uh, ending December 31st, 2024. Uh, John Walton is the elected officials appointee and Lauren Wills is voted on as the Paulding County employee appointee. Number eight is Paulding County Department of Family and Children's Services with a five-year term ending December 31st, 2025. Lieutenant Brian Smith is the Board of Commissioners appointee. Item number nine is the Fire Advisory Board with a one-year term ending December 31st, 2021. Emery Gordy, Chairman Appointee. Matt Mason, Post 1 Appointee. Randy Richards, Post 2 Appointee. Robert Owens, Post 3 Appointee. And Chris Wheeler, Post 4 Appointee. Item number 10 is the Planning and Zoning Commission with a one-year term ending December 31st, 2021. Ms. Deborah Seaver is the chairman's appointee. James Steele, post one appointee. Ellis Aston is point two, post two appointee. Mm -hmm. Roger Leggett is the post three appointee. And Jody Palmer is the post four appointee. Paulding County Recreational Commission Board with a five year term ending in December 31st, 2025. Ben Paris, post one appointee. And Cage Bullard, Post four appointee. Next is the Region One Mental Health Development Disabilities and Addictive Diseases Advisory Council with a three year term ending December 31st, 2023. Michelle Boatwright, BOC appointee. Michelle Craig, Greg with BOC appointee. Item 13, appoint Chief Tim King to uh, the Region 1 Emergency Medical Services Advisory Council with a term ending June 30th, 2021. Item 14 is the appointment of the Paulding County Water and Sewer Advisory Board. has a one-year term ending December 31st, 2021. Uh, Bobby Hollis, the chairman appointee. Bobby Maddox, chairman's appointee. David Barnett, Chairman's appointee. Jeremiah Fields, Post 1 appointee. Jim Smith, Post 3 appointee. And Mr. Wayne Kirby, Post 4 appointee. Zoning Board of Appeals with a one-year term ending December 31st, 2021. Lamar Clark, Chairman appointee. Dave Roberts, Post 1 appointee. Jack Hart, post two appointee. Robert Owens, post three appointee. And Jerry Johnson, post four appointee. Hey, thank you, board, for helping uh, with, with those uh, announcements. And thank all of you um, board members that have been read out, uh, realizing that uh, there are a lot of positions that they're still serving their term. Uh, so. Uh, the Board of Commissioners just uh, expresses appreciation for your willingness to serve and uh, be a part of the county's involvement in those specialized areas. Uh, would anyone like, well, let me finish the rest of these items. Uh, number 16 is to adopt community development job uh, classification for plans examiner, plans examiner position. Number 17 is Lieutenant Mark Parker is retiring from the Sheriff's Office on January the 8th. It's already passed, 2021. Uh, the policy to retire a service pistol to a deputy has been met by Lieutenant Parker, so the Sheriff's Office requests to retire Lieutenant Parker's Glock pistol. Number 18 uh, is to authorize the chairman to execute amended easement document um, for American Tower Corporation, DBA Verizon Wireless, located on county property at 38 Tower Drive, Dallas, Georgia, 30132. And finally, number 19 is to approve an additional amount of $3,454.51 to cover additional parts determined necessary for the replacement of generator rebuild 
that was approved on June 23, 2020. Uh, would any of the commissioners like to move any of these items to new business? Hearing none, they'll remain on the uh, agenda item for voting this afternoon. Uh, old business, none. Moving into new business, item number 20 is a public hearing regarding establishing a special streetlight district along a section of Seven Hills Boulevard. So at this time, I'd like to uh, open the public hearing for any comments on this special streetlight dis district and ask uh, Mr. George Jones uh, to speak uh, on any of the ramifications of this project. <coughs> Morning. Morning. Uh, the DOT was approached by the declarant of the Seven Hills HOA requesting the county take over the boulevard street lighting system along Seven Hills Boulevard. Seven Hills Boulevard is a public road owned and maintained by Paulding County. The street light system on Seven Hills Boulevard starts at Cedar Crest Road and goes to the end of the divide and median roadway, approximately 2.4 miles. This was a privately funded and paid for streetlight system installed at the direction of Temco Associates, who was the original developer of Seven Hills Boulevard. At the time, the county did not have a mechanism in place to take over the cost of the street lighting along that section. Um, Temco performed the work at their own cost, assuming all present and future um, costs of the system that would either be paid for by them or their successor or the HOA um, for Seven Hills. Um, there are two, right, currently at this time, the Boulevard street lighting system is paid for by the Seven Hills HOA. There are two companies that provide electrical service um, on the Boulevard, Cobb EMC and Greystone Power. The total cost for these services for both companies is $1,156.24 per month at this time. That includes 93 luminaires up and down the parkway. Um, with the 2017 update to the county street lighting, ordinance there is now a mechanism in place for the county to take over the street lighting along this boulevard if so desired um, by current street lighting ordinance revenues from the street lighting fund can be used for direct and indirect costs and expenses related to the county street light program the street lighting system is on the county right of way this again this is a public road and we generally agree that this street lighting should be taken over um, by the county so um, basically, um, respectfully request that the board authorize the chairman to establish a special streetlight district along seven, this section of Seven Hills Boulevard and accept ownership and maintenance costs for the streetlight system. Yeah. Are there any citizens that might be in the room that would like to um, participate in, in this public hearing and make any comments? Seeing none, hearing none. Um, I will at this time close the public hearing, and George, thank you for your information. We'll discuss it more this afternoon. Thank you. And a new business item number 21, discuss action to authorize the purchase of one replacement pump for the Westbrook 2 sanitary sewer pump station for $57,603.24. Ms. Lori Ashmore, the director to report. Our Westbrook 2 uh, pump station is a major component of our collection system that transports wastewater to our pumpkin vine uh, water reclamation facility. There are four stations that pump to and through this pumping, pumping station. So it's a significant work, workhorse for us. Um, one of the two pumps in the station has developed major mechanical issues and we are currently having only have one pump installed. Um, we are, after reviewing the cost of repair and replacement, uh, looking at the age of this lift station, it was originally, this pump uh, was originally installed in 1999. Um, and it is, so a 20, 21 year old 88 horsepower pump. Um, and so we are uh, at this point requesting authorization to purchase a replacement to restore this uh, pump station to full capacity. Questions? 
that a normal life of a pump, or is that? It is. It's. Uh, it's also. It's in a really rough um, kind of conditions. Where it's a lot of grit. We get a lot of grit in through that station, so it takes um, a little bit. It, it's taken a little off the life of it. Um, but this is a pump station that is. You've got to remember we we're running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it. it but so all of the grit that's coming through is really hard on it. Thank you, Ms. Ashmore. New business item number 22 is discuss action to appoint uh, members to the Pauley County Economic Development Organization Board with a one year term ending December 31st, 2021. The, uh, the membership per bylaws is for two commissioners to be on this board and Mr. Sandy Caker is designated as the chairman's appointee, Commissioner Ryan Stover as the post commissioner's appointee. Uh, and then per membership bylaws also, the Board of Commissioners nominates two additional people, uh, and it's Greg Perry and Matt Bazzelli. So, any comments? Item number 23 is discuss action to appoint um, members to the Pauling County Keep Pauling Beautiful Board with a three-year term ending December 31st, 2023. The individuals are Curtis Miller, a chairman appointee, Steve Caker, Post 2 appointee, uh, Sam Farrell and Bethany Helton at large members, and Amber Cordell as a post four appointee. Any questions or comments? Well, that is the conclusion of our regular business. Uh, we have no, no members of the public who have signed up for non-agenda items. Uh, we have no requirement for executive session today. Frank, it seemed like I was supposed to call on you about something, <laughs> and I'm forgetting it. We can cover it this afternoon at the voting meeting at 2 o'clock if necessary. Um, so as has become our tradition, I'll ask the commissioners, and we'll start with post four uh, as far as any announcements or, or comments or things you want to celebrate or promote. Well, this is the, hopefully we'll celebrate 2021. How about that? <laughs> No, that does sound good, but uh, Jerry Jerry came in a minute ago and he was talking about the stability of these department heads, and I just want to reiterate, as we go down through there, I know it seems like it's just mundane, but they're truly appreciated for what they do. It's it's really cool when you're when you're sitting down and you're trying to read these agendas and things don't just completely come into place, and, and you can call these experts or these subject matter experts, and they can explain this stuff to you and help you along the way. And I do believe that each one that we have is dedicated to what they do, and I am thankful for. Well, I got a Christmas card, one of my favorites from Make-A-Wish Foundation. A lot of y'all were uh, participants of Make-A-Wish uh, as our staff. It's something that we've done together for the last three years. So it's the Make-A-Wish Foundation. I'm not going to read you uh, the words to it, but just reminded me that something we were involved in that was, uh, it makes me happy. I'm with Brian. Let's celebrate 2021, 2020. Well, I don't have to tell you. It was 2020. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. I, I'd just like to thank everybody for the overwhelming support through the campaign, the election. Uh, it's been very humbling and appreciate everybody's support. Um, can't thank the department heads enough. The department heads and the, uh, all the staff and county employees, they're the backbone of the operations of the county and everyone's been very supportive and helpful and accessible to me through the transition and that's been a, a big help for me uh, even through the busy holiday schedule and I can't thank everybody enough for that and uh, 
definitely want to thank these guys. Uh, Chairman, Frank, Jason, Commissioner Caker, Commissioner Hart, Commissioner Stover, these guys have uh, just been so supportive. I can't put into words how much I appreciate their help getting transitioned in and, and on board. And I'm looking forward to being a member of Team Paul. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Keith. Well, I will entertain a motion uh, to adjourn at this time. Make a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn by Commissioner Stover. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Hart. All those in favor say aye. 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 We stand adjourned. <laughs>